Hey everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. As I'm filming this video, we're about to enter week 10 of the 2022 NFL season. That means that by some quick maths, Keenan Allen's hamstring has been injured for about 85 years or so. Today's video is going to be a rewind on Keenan Allen's injury to date, as we use his hamstring as a case study for why everyone hates this injury so much. It's one of the most unpredictable and unpleasant muscles to injure in sports, and my goal is today you learn why. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button down below and click the bell so you are notified when I release new videos just like this one. I am a physiotherapist who makes physiotherapy related videos, kind of like sports injuries in this case. I'm doing a lot of NFL videos right now, but I make videos all year round. All right, so the rewind for this video goes all the way back to week one of the 2022 NFL season when Keenan Allen pulled his hamstring partway through the game. At the time, it kind of seemed like, well, that's too bad. He'll probably miss a game or two. Just a game or two. He has, in fact, at this point, missed more than a game or two. He re-injured his hamstring early in the season as he was pushing quickly to get back into the lineup. He said as much in a quote that I read where he talked about pushing it too fast to try and get back on the field quickly. Since that re-aggravation early in the season, he's only participated in one game, where in week 7, he played 32% of the team's offensive snaps and was on a pretty low pitch count. He didn't look 100% right either out there. He then re-aggravated his hamstring again during the Chargers' bye in week 8 and did not play at all in their week 9 game. Since that point, it seems pretty unlikely that he's even going to play this weekend in week 10. It seems especially unlikely that he's back out there given that Allen has said he only wants to get back onto the field. Once he feels 100%, he doesn't want to go back onto a pitch count again. So this weekend feels pretty unlikely. And that's Keenan Allen's season in a nutshell this year. Injury in week one to that hamstring, a re-aggravation early in the season between weeks three and five, missed up until week seven where he only got to play a few snaps, re-aggravated during the week eight bye week, missed week nine, and now here we are scrambling over our waiver wires for Joshua Palmer. Quick note, I've made more in-depth videos on what muscle strains, ligament sprains actually are. If you're more interested in checking that out, I'll link that over here. For today's video, just know that Keenan Allen's injury was a grade two muscle strain to his hamstring with re-aggravations following. Keenan Allen is definitely not alone in this kind of frustrating recovery from a hamstring injury though. We're making an example out of him today by what it's done to his season, but the hamstring monster can catch the best of players. I mean, this year, another player is almost going through an identical situation battling a hamstring injury with Darren Waller, and the Raiders just placed him on IR this past week after he re-aggravated his hamstring, meaning that he's going to be out for the next four weeks. Let's get more specific about why these injuries are so difficult to recover from as we take a look at the hamstrings muscle group. The hamstrings muscle group is made up of three muscles running down the back of the leg, which have four muscular heads or bundles of muscle fibers between them. On the outside of the back of the thigh, we have biceps femoris, which has two heads running inside of it. On the inside of the back of the thigh, we have two muscles, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus, and that group of muscles is referred to as the hamstrings muscle group. Something really important to note about this muscle group is where these muscles attach in the body. This has a really big impact on how it works because this muscle group crosses two joints. All three muscles connect up at the top on the bottom of the pelvis at the ischial tuberosity. This means that this muscle group crosses the hip at the back. So when it contracts, it's going to pull the leg backwards or into hip extension. The bottom connections of all of these muscles sit below the knee on the bones that we think of as the shin or calf bones, tibia and fibula. This means that because this muscle crosses over top of the knee joint, when it contracts, it's going to cause the knee to bend. Summarizing, the hamstrings muscle group is one muscle group which has four muscular heads made up of three muscles and crosses two joints at the back of the leg. It crosses the hip at the top of the muscles and it crosses the knee at the bottom. This means that it's involved in hip movement as well as knee movement. What could possibly go wrong? Muscles across two joints in the body are at more of a risk for strain and difficult recovery 
because of the demand that's placed on these muscles. If we're crossing two joints, this means that simultaneously this muscle is possibly getting pulled on in two different places in two different ways at the exact same time. This is particularly difficult to recover from for athletes like Alan or Darren Waller because of just what these muscles have to do. When we're sprinting a lot, making really fast cuts, the muscle that goes down the back of the thigh and crosses both of the major joints involved in sprinting has to do a lot. Basically, hamstrings are really difficult to recover and rehab from because of the fact that they cross both joints. This means that when we're recovering, trying to get back up to game speed, we're not just managing one joint movement that you have to strengthen for, you've got a strained and weakened muscle that's getting pulled on in two very specific and challenging ways. So now, if you're into football or if you're into pro sports in general and you see hamstring injury prop up under a player's name, Hopefully now you understand why that's not really a great thing and why the recovery may take a little bit longer than it should. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate the support and hope you learned something new today. Hopefully you now know a little bit more about sports and the anatomy behind these injuries. If you have any questions about today's video or sports injuries in general, drop me a comment in the comment section down below and I will get back to you there. I generally touch base with people within a couple days. so. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Most importantly though guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.